Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, October the 3rd, 2024. In today's update, we are going to be looking at the Gulf of Mexico because we are still keeping an eye on an area of disturbed weather that is likely to develop somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico in the next seven days. We're also keeping an eye on Major Hurricane Kirk. While it's not going to be threatening anyone, it's always nice to briefly talk about this because this is already a major Category 4 hurricane. And then we got Leslie down here and then maybe something else coming off of Africa that the ensembles are beginning to pick up on beyond the 10-day forecast. So now to start off this video, here's a look at the Gulf of Mexico on our GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery. And as you can see here, there are quite a bit of clouds over the Gulf of Mexico indicating to us there's a lot of moisture waiting to build up with our next system that develops down here in the Bay of Campeche. This is going to be moving generally to the northeast and then eventually could curve off towards the east northeast towards the Florida coast here by the next seven to ten days. But what also you don't see here is some glitches on the satellite imagery and that's because we did have an X9.1 something X-class solar flare that did explode on the Earth side of the sun. So that's why there are some glitches on the imagery. Also, another system of interest, some people that like tracking these hurricanes for the fun of it because there's not really much to track on other than the Gulf of Mexico, is Major Hurricane Kirk with winds up to 130 miles an hour right now. And that CDO really shows that very well. In fact, it's been getting clearer and more circular with some lightning orbiting around that eye like future, which tells us that Kirk is still intensifying here with winds between 130 to maybe even 145 miles an hour and pressures down to as low as 930 to 935. Millibars. Now, when you take a look at the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, there are three areas to monitor just for the fun of it, but one area probably going to become concerning, and that is in the Gulf of Mexico. There is a 30% chance for this to develop into something like a tropical depression or storm, and it's only 30, so it's a low chance, but that could get upgraded here shortly to about a 40% chance in the next update from the NHC, which will be in the next hour and a half. Then we, of course, have Hurricane Kirk over here with 130 mile an hour winds, pressures down to about 945 millibars, probably a little lower than that because of how intense Kirk actually is initially. Um, based on our um, RAL guidance, which is real time uh, tropical cyclone. Uh, monitoring has pressures down to 931 millibars right now. So that's very low. Leslie also gaining strength with winds of about 50 miles an hour. But the good news about these two storms is both are likely to go out to sea, such as Hurricane Kirk here. And as you can see, there are major hurricane um, specs here all the way through Sunday morning. So again, category four or greater, maybe even a three here, and then becoming a hurricane again as it encounters deep layer shear, unfavorable conditions, and a lot of dry air intrusions as it encounters more of that trough-like uh, pattern to the north of the system. But right now it's in a favorable environment for continued strengthening. Also, Leslie, too, expected to become a major hurricane. But two, this is going to stay away from any land areas. And you can see how this is going to turn likely to the northwest. There are some model consensus, such as from the Euro, that some of this, these members bring it pretty close to a Category 4 or even a Category 5 hurricane to the northwest of or to the northeast of the, uh, the Greater Antilles as well as the um, some of the British Virgin Islands. We'll have to keep an eye on that because if this doesn't develop as quick, maybe it goes further west and then gains uh, latitude later on and gets much closer like some of the ensemble members from the EPS are showing. And you can see this, a great illustration from last night, Zero Z ensemble forecast from the Euro. Uh, all 51 members run the ensemble and they're still showing that this could get really close to the islands. Now, this is not the current run. This is not the latest information, 
but it did show us this westward jog potentially to the forecast and all these pink lines here indicate winds greater than 100 knots that's major hurricane intensity and even some of these members like over here bring this to category 4 or even a category 5 intensity as it gets pretty close to the islands and we saw this with lee before it got really close to the islands and it got become a very strong hurricane cat 5 intensity near uh last year now on the latest run you can see it shifted back to the east again so now all the members are keeping this away from the islands but still one of these members bring this really close to a hurricane near the northeastern end of the greater antilles here such as the northeastern caribbean the uh, british virgin islands and still show this becoming a big hurricane in the atlantic so now with that being said we do have a lot to talk about in the main development region of the atlantic i know our two storms are going out to sea but one of them again could come pretty close to the windward islands in the next 10 days that's the concern in today's forecast and then of course what develops over the gulf of mexico and then maybe a third system coming off of africa in the next five to ten days it's not noted on the nhc yet but if we go back and look at our ensemble output here from the the weathernerds.org website you can see there's that third area some members picking that up too that could become our next tropical storm perhaps in the day 10 time frame or even a little sooner than that so back to the tropical tidbits here looking at our models and we can see there is kirk very big hurricane going on right now with pressures really low we uh, we showed you that um on the nhc forecast actually didn't really actually show it to you but the pressures actually did because it was on the uh, overlay 945 millibars but it's lower than this okay the aphis is not a high resolution model so it's not going to show us the lowest pressure but it does show us 959 millibars so that's a big big hurricane possibly a cat high in cat four maybe low in cat five we'll see that eye is very intense right now and it could still make way for cat five intensity before it encounters that negative environment now there's another system that's Leslie as it moves generally northwestward. But again, look at how close this gets to the islands. If we look at prior runs, um, it's not as strong. It's a little weaker. And each time it's weaker, it goes a little further west. And we have seen this in different model runs. So this is still in reach for those islands. And also take note, there is some upwelling of cooler water. And that's because there will be some uh, um, upwelling of cooler water beneath the cyclone because it's not going to be moving very fast. And then that moves out to sea. Now, looking at our GFS model, this is the vorticity plot showing our two systems. Again, Kirk and Leslie. Can't believe it. We are going to have two major hurricanes to track here, perhaps. Uh, maybe even two Cat 4 hurricanes at the same time. We'll see about that. Um, and maybe another Cat 5 before the season ends because we have a Kirk that could get close to that intensity. Now, um, in the next two days, you can see there is Kirk there with the vorticity plot signature. So a big hurricane, very large in nature. And then here comes um, Leslie. It goes this way. So again, we talked about how the system is going to go gain latitude and then maybe bend back to the west a little bit before it moves back to the north again. And then there is our next system. We'll look at a zoomed in view on that um, in the Gulf of Mexico because that could bring in some big time um, life threatening flooding and some wind concerns eventually. That goes to the north and again there's that bend to the west and then it goes um, it kind of slingshots northeast because this trough that impacts um, the system and it's going to uh, feel the tug a war on that westerly flow now looking at the gulf of mexico here in the next five days this is for october the 8th and yes october is no stranger danger to major hurricanes that could still develop in the gulf of mexico especially in the first half of october and so this is no exception not that we will see a major hurricane but the ceiling is there for a strong tropical storm or hurricane to form in the Gulf of Mexico and then eventually towards Florida. So this is by five days out and we have a broad system. Now this is tropical storm force winds here. Pressure's down 996 millibars. This would be a really big system. This would be large. Large systems could bring impacts well away from the center 
and we ha even have a little bit of a, a glocket of spin that is moving off of Great Albaco in the Bahamas too, and that could enhance the rainfall along this boundary, okay? Now, moving forward here uh, throughout the end of next week, right? Yes, this would be uh, next week on Wednesday and Thursday. And we have a system here, possibly um, getting close to hurricane intensity here. This is a 984, 985 millibar system. That purple there is hurricane force winds impacting Florida here. And it moves over there, directly over the populated areas of Sarasota, Cape Coral, as well as say Tampa Bay, Florida, with some intense winds, some storm surge flooding, some heavy rainfall flooding, and this kind of falls apart once it gets past Florida because it's going to encounter a unfavorable environment eventually. But before that, it's going to have a lot of rainfall to work with and a lot of moisture too to feed off of. And you can see that here. So if we go back in time, um, a lot of the heaviest rainfall could start as early as about three days from now. You can see um, Sarasota, Cape Coral, as well as, say, if you are in Lake Okeechobee down there in Miami, Florida, and even, say, St. Pete in Florida, as well as, say, Tampa Bay, Florida, moderate to heavy rainfall. Look at the rain is going to continue. This is the big flood threat that could evolve over this area and then look at it just gets worse and worse and worse look at that heavy rainfall right there that purple indicates some intense rainfall maybe rainfall rates up to three to four inches an hour that would be very concerning for some of that life-threatening to catastrophic flooding and speaking of flooding here's a look at the rainfall forecast um this is not going very far out let's look at our 12z model run um because the 18z is not going this far out and you can see right in here over central and even southern florida could see anywhere between five inches all the way up to as much as 20 inches of rainfall that's two feet of rainfall in a short amount of time and this is going to be a great reminder that you don't need a tropical storm or hurricane regardless of development this system could certainly bring some very intense rainfall flooding and um, some storm surge problems to the coast here of Tampa Bay, as well as Lake Okeechobee, including for Sarasota Bay, Florida. Now, this is a look at the intensity forecast on the remnants of 11, soon to become our next area of disturbed weather once it gets into the Gulf. So it's the same system. And once it gets into the Gulf, look at some of these models, uh, that ceiling I told you, it could be a tropical storm with, the, with what we were seeing, maybe a low-grade hurricane, all the way up to a Category 4 hurricane. Category 4 in the Gulf. Uh, we did not see Helene rapidly intensifying to a Category 4 very well. We kind of did. We kind of didn't. Um, but this one could have a surprise again, similar to Helene. Hopefully, it's not like Helene. But there, the concern here is it could end up being that way. My intensity forecast is very low, though, but I do expect this to become a high-end tropical storm in about five to six days once it enters the Gulf of Mexico. And this could be generous given with what we're seeing right now. And if this changes, it could go downtrend or it could uptrend. We'll see, but right now, um, pretty much four of the models indicate that this will become a hurricane in about five to six days in the Gulf of Mexico. The track forecast is very uncertain, and you can see this right here. Actually, pretty, um, pretty good consolidation here, moving over the Bay of Campeche in about two to three, uh, in about one to two days, and then two to three to even four days in the central portion of the Gulf of Mexico, but there are some models are really slow, and the slower this moves, the more intense it could gather because of uh, the heat content in the ocean, very warm sea surface temperatures, so this is why we need to watch this. Do not take your eye off the Gulf of Mexico. We've seen Helene, we saw Debbie, we saw Barrel th move through here, and they both intensified right before landfall. And we can see the same thing happen with the remnants of 11 as it moves over the Gulf. Now, this makes more some credibility here, looking at the global tropical hazard outlook, showing us, again, that low chance of tropical development through the 15th. Again, this is going to be the area that we really got to watch. This is going to be the area we have to watch the uh, central main development region. And then also later on, still through most of October, it appears here through the three-week period, 
we could still see some surprise tropical development down here in the Caribbean. And if anything gets into the Gulf or goes this way, someone's going to get hurt perhaps. And there could be some devastation if we get any tropical development in a significant sense. Now the sea surface temperatures have cooled off a little bit in the Gulf of Mexico, but remain exceptionally warm for this time of the year. It's October the 3rd, folks. This is delayed by a day, but either way you put it, the water temperatures in the Gulf are just mind-boggling warm. Very concerning here. Even so, and I want to make it clear, Helene moved over this area of very warm upper ocean heat content, and yet it did not chisel it away whatsoever. Very little, if any, because the system moved through pretty quickly. So that's the concern here for our next system. It's going to be moving this way, and then look at how warm the water temperatures are. It's just bad news. It's going to be bad news, unfortunately. Looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly here in the Gulf of Mexico, running about 2 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. And again, it's not going to take much. And look at you cannot even see where Helene went through at all. No cold water upwelled because of how fast this went through. And you can even see this from the upper ocean heat content. Really no bite or deviation or any um dent issued here on the um upper ocean heat content map and look at some of these numbers here look at this some of these up here to 200 so when once we get our system that forms down here moves this way over that warm patch of water that's why some of the models show rapid intensification in the central portion of the gulf of mexico and that's why again we well, gotta watch this one. And also on the upper ocean heat content anomaly here, really, really significant for this time of the year. And that's why we are not taking our eyes off this system whatsoever. One quick thing I wanted to show you all, the deep layer moisture plot showing us all that moisture that this system is gonna have with it. And look at where it's all at, hitting Florida. So even so there might be some wind shear, some drier air intrusions. This is still going to strengthen somewhat, and it could, again, bring some formidable amounts of rainfall and some problems. Upper level winds, you can see some of that wind shear cutting across the system. We could even zoom out and look at this a little bit more deeply, looking at our wind shear forecast, showing us, again, some of that wind shear that is cutting across the system. Now, with that being said, I hope you found this video very helpful and very detailed. If you did enjoy the video also, Please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell icon, and also leave a like in the section below this video, and also actually leave a like in the video, and also leave a comment in the section below this video if you did enjoy today's update. But otherwise, again, we are keeping an eye on many areas out there in the main development region. And if you do like tracking these hurricanes from a distance, well, this is your opportunity to watch this right now. And I might be doing a special members only mission into Kirk for tomorrow, uh, where I do fly into the hurricane via flight simulator, which is going to be pretty exciting. So don't miss out on that also. But otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.